Bitte? Und bitte. <lacht> so, also, what we have here is a wing rip of a Fokker C1, which is similar to the D7 wing rip. The C1 was the two-seat version of the Fokker D7, which was intended as the standard reconnaissance aircraft at the end of the war. Today we're building a wing rib, or the components of the wing rib. Currently I'm preparing the so-called cap strips. These are the stringers which are attached to the rib webs to which the fabric is attached. In order to attach the fabric to the cap strips, the cap strip on the left side in direction of flight of the rib web is covered and wrapped with a fabric cloth strip. The whole thing will be put into a jig and will be nailed from the wrapped side right through the rib web into the below unwrapped cap strip. I will prepare one of these stringers which will become the cap strips now and will show you how the making of one of these ribs is coming along. Holzleisten im rohen Zustand, 5x5 mm Lindenholz und hier sind für eine der Rippen schon vorbereitet die bewickelten Gurte. Und zugeschnitten werden die Leisten an der kleinen Säge, da musst du nur aufpassen, weil die schiebe ich da durch jetzt. Gell? Just slightly sanding the edges. So I will now prepare one of the cap strips, which I do into the jig to make sure that all fits together. For this we take one of the recently cut cap strips. These are the unwrapped 5x5 five five millimeter lime wood. The fabric wrapping will be done once they fit into the jig. We have to pre bend and pre shape the front portion to make the stringer follow the rib contour, otherwise because of its own tension it would work against the shape of the rib during nailing and we don't want that. To bend wood we need heat. Many think that you need steam or have to cook the wood, which is not the case. To bend wood you need heat, water or the cooking of wood or to expose wood to hot steam only serves to bring the heat through the steam as a medium into the depth of the wood cells which are inside of the wood piece that you want to peak. It's a transportation medium, you don't need it. It is hindering because if the cells fill up with water, they soak up with water they extend and they become stiff and they don't want to be bent anymore that good. With small wooden stringers up to a cross section of 10 by 10 millimeters you can work with just the heat. You can make a complicated uh, device which makes sure that the heat is brought into the wood from all sides or you can go the simple way and use an old hot plate with a round piece of steel on top of it. I've marked the position where I want to pre-bend the wood. I'm demonstrating the bending procedure at an old hot plate as just mentioned. So we do have uh, the stringer and our primitive construction of a hot plate 
on which I put a round steel bar on top, which helps me to bring the heat into the wood since it heats up on the hot plate naturally. So I'm just turning the wood a few times, just bring the heat into the wood stringer. The temperature of the hot plate is about by 150 degrees Celsius, so just enough to make sure the wood doesn't take color. I mean, during cooking you want some bits and pieces in your pan to take color, but we don't want it here. As you can see, there's a bit of smoke, but it doesn't harm the wood in any way. I'm just pushing it slight against the round steel bar that I have here. Heat comes from underneath, from the hot plate and from one side uh, through the steel bar. At a certain point it becomes soft as rubber. It's, it's just an, an, an image of course, it doesn't have anything to do with rubber. It, it just bends, uh, follows the contour of the round steel bar. If I make it too fast and the wood isn't hot enough yet, it may happen that it breaks which I don't want, this is why I take my time to do this. I, I don't need a, a long distance of a curve, just a small bit to bring the edges and to take the tension out of the wood. As you can see, what we have now is a very nice curve in the wood, nicely bent. I hold it in that position until it cools down, then it stays in this shape. The result is a nicely curved wooden stringer. Into the jig I can mark the position where I want to cut the wood stringer. I take the handsaw and just cut it off. Now we have a wooden stringer that follows nicely the contour of the rib. Very nice. So, so I will now go and get my glue, which stands in the warm because outside here it's a bit cold. And then I show you how the cap strips are wrapped. Now we do the wrapping of uh, the left hand side cap strip of the rib, which I have on my on a roll here. It's a linen linen tape cloth tape it gives some glue on the end of the of the strip to glue it at the beginning I don't glue it uh, over the entire length of the cap strips because we want to sew our the stitch our fabric to the linen wrapping of the cap strip if you have anything on top of the fabric wrapping which glues up the fabric wrapping on the cap strip you have a hard time getting your needle through
Könnt ihr auch nochmal verkleben. As said, the end is glued as well. Just to prevent it from getting unwrapped again. In dem gesamten unbeklebten the entire Bereich, area. Wenn er hat den the fabric wrapping. Kann ich mit einer you can nach oben stitch the fabric on top of this wrapping step by step. Until the fabric cover of the rib is stitched to the rib, through the rib, cap strip wrapping. So this is one of the wrapped cap strips now. They will be pre-drilled so that I can put the nails in. There's not a technical necessity to do it, but I want to have it looking nice, so I want equal distances to place the nails. Uh, this is why I pre-drill it. I use a one millimeter drill for my one millimeter nails. I drill half through the cap strip so that I can plug into these holes the nails. It makes it look nicer and more regular. So we have a pre-drilled cap strip. We know where the nails will be placed. <laughs> it's like a cooking studio TV show. I prepared something here. So we take just the nails and simply plug them in. Oops, sometimes they just fly off. And now I show how such a wing rip is eventually assembled. We do have this template here. This template provides the outer shape of the airfoil. There is a groove routed in, 5 mm wide, 5 mm deep, so that the stringer fits in nicely. To prevent the cap strip from going away from the rib, we have those little wooden blocks nailed to the template base. We put the jig in and take the stringer, the unwrapped one, for the right side of the rib and just put it in. It fits pretty tight because we want to make sure the rib has the contour the jig provides to us. The same we do at the bottom. The second unwrapped cap strip. And then we have the so-called rib webs, the three pieces the nose part, the center section, and the tail of the rib. They are made from 1.2 millimeter plywood on the Fokker D7. They are then also using the same jig, but we show this in a different step at another time. When the rib cap strips, the unwrapped ones, are in place in the jig, we put the rib webs in their position. These are spaces for the wing spars. Eventually, when doing the assembly, the whole thing will be glued, of course, otherwise it won't hold. And just nailing is not very durable. The wrapped top cap strip will be placed on top and will be pushed against the wooden blocks. And now I can take the little hammer and just push the nails right through the rib web right into the unwrapped cap strip on the other side. 
We will do this all around and of course the same at the bottom. And when it comes out it looks like the C1 rib I showed you at the beginning. And as you have seen with the other rib, in its center there's this reinforcement strip. It's a triangular piece of wood, a wooden stringer. We cut them now. We need four pieces. We've got two ribs, two on each of the ribs, so one left, one right. Cut it like, like Grandpa did with a handsaw again. No, we have a twig hole in here. It happens in lime wood as well. So we need to get rid of that, cut it off and throw it away. Don't need it in an airplane. These are those reinforcement strips, stringers, which are nailed in glued to the left and right of the rib to take the compression that is produced by the fabric cover to prevent the rib from buckling in. So, and since we don't want additional weight, we cut off all we don't need. As you can see, we take away everything we don't need. That's weight. Even this is weight. So you can see the regular triangular strip and the end is cut off just to save weight. Many underestimate this issue. It's not so important what the airplane weights, it is what or how this weight adds up under load manifolds in flight. If something weights just 600 grams, that's yeah, a little more than half a kilogram, but under 10 g's of load, it adds up to 6 kilograms, which the aircraft has to carry. That means you are not able to produce a stronger aircraft by putting more material in it, by making things thicker and stronger. The opposite is the case. You have to take off what you don't need to prevent building up of loads, which the aircraft structure has to carry under certain circumstances.
Now the entire thing comes into the jig and we can start nailing. So two of the nails just popped out, it's not a problem, we just have to replace them. Then we can take out the whole thing out of the jig, wait until the glue is set, the nails hold it in place as long as this takes, and we have a very nice rib. This is a very effective way of doing wing ribs. One of these ribs consists of 11 parts when completely done. As you can see, it's done in no time and is pretty, pretty strong. To give you an idea of how strong these ribs actually are, taking into consideration that they are made of a single sheet of 1.2 mm plywood only with the stringers on top and bottom, uh, I have been asked many times uh, what they actually hold and of course during the certification of my aircraft I had 
to prove the strength of them by actual doing load tests until things break uh, to see what they can actually hold and I can show you a few photographs here now which give you an idea of that we tried just to rip off the cap strips in between the main spars using clamps that slided on the rip webs up and down so that the load is just carried by the cap strips themselves and we, we ended up putting 500 kilograms just between the two wing spars and we could not rip the cap strips off so this is, this is incredible these are loads which never occur in flight and if they do then there went something different wrong so Fokker Fokker was not a, a sloppy airplane designer he knew exactly what he did and he learned from the things that went wrong during the war and he actually tried to make his airplane as safe as possible for the time and the material given they are very sophisticated Hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time. Bye.